So I was pretty sore today from my last workout, which uh, if you're looking at the YouTube page, you can go and check that out. And this warm up that I did, this joint mobility warm up, um, really did a lot to loosen me up and make me feel a lot better. I was especially sore in my trapezius, my lower traps, uh, the back, you know, right between my shoulder blades, rhomboids, my lats, rear delts, pretty much everywhere on my back from the pull ups and uh, um, right from the kettlebell overhead presses, just really, really sore. So I'm just going through some basic mobility moves here. You can watch them, you can do them. This is one of my favorite, these next three actually, the neck joint mobility moves because everyone is so tight in our neck <clears throat> and it's so easy to tighten up. This next one is really good, excellent. Especially if you have bad posture, your neck is constantly strained if you have bad posture. I shoot for 10 reps going each way. And then the next one is I'll look over my shoulder on both sides, on each side. This is good to do when you wake up in the morning. If you've been watching TV for a while, if you've been sitting in front of the computer, if you've been reading a book, looking down, looking down at your phone, like I'm doing right now, recording this video, this is really good to loosen up your neck. Uh, this will also help you to improve your posture by loosening up a lot of the muscles that can contribute to bad posture. There are many of them. This one I actually learned from an old Bruce Lee movie. Uh, but it really, really helps loosen up like your trapezius area between your uh, shoulders and your neck. <clears throat> this one I got from Original Strength on Instagram. Um, they have a lot of really, really good mobility flows that they take you through. Excellent stuff on there. Highly recommended. It really helps to loosen up the inner thighs, the hips. Uh, if your hips pop, you know, when you stretch your hamstrings or when you get your legs out to the side, this will get them to pop. It'll feel really good and I shoot for 10 circles going each direction. I have a lot of people that I train do this one to warm up to. This is a good warm up for swimmers. Um, I train a couple of young swimmers. This is a good warm up for, I train a group of people, uh, most of which are in their 60s. I have them do this. Most workouts will do this as a mobility warm up. Next one, tried and true, um, for warming up the hamstrings and the quads and the knees and the ankles. Um, actually even gets the shoulders when you hold on to your feet when you pop your hips up in the air like that this is a good go-to <clears throat> in this stuff that you're seeing on the video is all I did for my warm-up that was it and then actually I'm sorry I did a couple of uh, lighter repetitions um, with kettlebells so I'm doing snatches here still working on the technique if you're a kettlebell aficionado then I'm sure you could find a lot of holes in my technique but I'm getting better at it and I'm working on it I've been doing these for about two years now, on and off. So uh, I'm not fresh into it, so I have what's basically comfortable for my technique, but I'm still working on it. So snatches, I did three sets of these. Single arm overhead snatch with a 53 pound kettlebell. And then I'm gonna go straight into a windmill. <clears throat> so I'm a little bit out of breath from doing the snatches. Not terribly so, but that made this windmill a lot tougher being out of breath, because it's a slow movement. I went especially slow on the right side for the first couple because I haven't done these with a 53 in probably about a couple months because I was doing a different program. But uh, these are excellent. I love these for core strength, strength in the side of my body, including my lats. All the muscles basically all the way up into your armpit and your shoulder and your triceps from holding it up overhead, your obliques, QLs, and your low back. I'm keeping my balance arm, my opposite arm, my right arm in this picture, really close to my leg. Sometimes I'll rub it like on the inside of my knee and my shin, as you can see right there, because I want that arm close to my center of gravity, and that will help me travel with the kettlebell overhead along the line of my center of gravity without getting out of the pocket there. <clears throat> but I love windmills. If you haven't done them before, definitely do those. There's me fixing my pants and looking at the camera. That's great to leave on film. I'm not taking it out, I don't care. Here's a double swing in between the legs, which is much harder than the next version I'll do, which is outside of my legs. And actually, I'm pretty pleased with my technique here. Um, it felt really uncomfortable when I was doing it. I'm pleased with it. Posture could be better, as with all my lifts, because my posture could be better in general. But I'm working on that. Uh, pistol squats. Again, posture could be better here. I do have a long torso. So that makes this move a little bit tougher because my torso has to sort of lean forward a lot more. 
I have a long torso and long upper legs, uh, both of which make this move a little bit tougher to do perfectly. You can see me losing my balance. By the third set, <clears throat> I actually just knocked them all out. Right leg, five in a row. Boom, left leg, five in a row. Yeah, the balance was a lot better. I was neurologically a lot more warmed up on my last set, which is the case with a lot of people. I'm one of those types where I can stand to be a little fatigued if I'm more warmed up because neurologically I'm more ready. This was my next set of double swings. I learned this from Mike Mahler, and you do them outside of the knees. I'm really comfortable having a narrow stance. I do my straight leg deadlifts and my regular deadlifts with a pretty narrow stance. So this is a really good exercise variation for me. I love this one. Gets the traps awesome too. Here's what I did for one of the sets of, or sorry, two of the sets of uh, windmills. I actually did a whole set of these on each side and then I realized I forgot the video so I went back and did another set. Um, these I just did three, it's a double windmill. And again, I'm holding you know the bottom kettlebell, 53, and the top one at the same time. So it's really important. You can see the kettlebells are lined up pretty well because I'm keeping them on my center of gravity. When you do a windmill, you want to travel along the line of your center of gravity, and you want to keep your shoulders pulled into the socket. Into that. I was pulling my shoulders into the socket right there. That's why I was talking funny as I was telling you that. So you're pulling the shoulder in the shoulder blade. You're not letting the shoulder come up high. I love this exercise. This is actually my first time ever doing this exercise uh, with both kettlebells. I've done it with pretty heavy kettlebells doing just one arm, so I knew that I could do it with 253s. The vanity muscles, actually this is a great functional exercise too for the hip flexors and lower abs. And you don't twist the spine, or you don't uh, flex the spine like you do doing a lot of abdominal exercises. I did 8-8-6 eight, eight, on those. And of course the finisher, I just did one set of these each side. <clears throat> Suitcase carries, because I'm only holding it in one arm. That's a 106 pound kettlebell. There's the real trick right there, I switched arms on the move. Made it a lot tougher for my cardio. 106 pounds, thanks for watching the workout.